and hello today I'm going to be talking about cleaning PCBs in the ultrasonic cleaning tank it's something I do quite a lot and I never really gave it much thought that it would gain any interest but I had a question about what I take off the boards and what there is to know like many questions there are a lot of ifs and buts about this and I'm <laughs> make a little video hopefully a short one first thing to consider is why are you cleaning the circuit board in the first place it may be but it's just covered in muck and just pretty gross and just wants to wash that may be or it may be to actually restore things like uh, switches and contacts and potentiometers that's the normal reason for doing it so if you're looking to clean the switches and potentiometers you've got a choice really you can either take them off the board and wash those separately or leave them on it's a bit of a decision as to which is more work but regardless of whatever reason you're doing the cleaning ultrasonic cleaning is really good it gets into all those hard to reach places it's it's the way to go, I really recommend it. But you have to then make a choice about what solvent you're using. You need to dissolve things and wash stuff off, but you don't know, <laughs> melt your components. Um, a very basic one, you could use water in there, but of course it's not going to degrease very well. Um, so you've got all sorts of choices. You could also put things like alcohol in there or other detergents, um, acetone. That'd be really aggressive. You don't want to make an explosive environment out of your Chinese ultrasonic cleaner, do you? Mm. <laughs> yeah, don't do that. A good few years ago, I decided to use something called Safe Wash because <laughs> it sounds pretty good. Designed for cleaning electronics. It's not the cheapest stuff, but it's not destroyed anything either, so I'm quite happy with it. But its active ingredient is various alcohols. Uh, the only downside to it is you can't use polystyrene components so you have to make sure you get those off the board these sort of things here the manufacturers tell you not to dilute it so I don't but they do say you've got to rinse it off in water afterwards the trouble with rinsing things off in water is getting the water back out of some components some of them will trap it things like these relays I mean this one is sealed at the bottom and around the top so this one's probably okay and the trouble is if you can't get the water in you won't get the cleaning fluid in so there's little point in having these in there at all um, and there's also a good chance for the water to collect underneath, trapped between the board and there. So it can be a bit of a pain, a bit of a choice you make. Depends what voltage you're switching, I guess. There's other relays, like these, which clearly uh, water will get in there. But to be honest, a lot of repairs <laughs> require these to be replaced anyway. So you may as well take them off before you clean the board. And the final operation for cleaning is drying that water again. That is another problem. Uh, to make water disappear, ideally you want to boil it off for over 100 degrees. The problem is a lot of plastics and components won't like that. A lot of capacitors are only rated for 85 degrees. I know that's a working temperature, but it doesn't sound great to heat them up, does it? So capacitors, especially large electrolytics, they're the ones I tend to take off, especially if they're, they're good ones or valuable. Some of them are quite expensive, so just don't risk it. The temperature of the drying oven is critical, I've found out. On old vintage circuit boards, the plastic parts just weren't up to the job for high temperature. These were just soldered with probably wave soldering where the boards just went over a wave of molten solder, soldered from underneath. So these plastic parts never really got that hot, so these will melt at quite a low temperature. So I've ruined quite a few things by melting them, believe me. In most cases, especially vintage stuff, you don't want to be going near 100 degrees. I'm tending to dry things at about 75, 80 degrees. It's good enough to get all the water out, I find. On the other hand, modern circuit boards with surface mount components, they will be quite often safe to put in without any worry. You'll find that all the components are rated for reflow soldering. So modern lead-free solder needs about 220 degrees to, to melt. So you know we're talking much hotter so none of these connectors are going to melt on here the capacitors will be up to it a lot better so less worry with this sort of board so those of you who have been following my channel will be well aware that my tank is in a sorry state it definitely needs cleaning out these tanks are quite well designed there's a little valve to turn just to dump all the stuff out so what do you do with all the old stuff you should bottle it up label it and take it to your local chemical disposal center once the tank's been cleaned out and dried, it's the pleasurable part of refilling it. Pretty easy to do, just pour some in. Somewhere between one quarter and three quarters full in this tank. It's not worth putting more in than you need because 
it just gets dirty and you have to throw more away. It's not cheap this stuff. Look at that beautiful blue pristine little ocean there. Ready to wash more circuit boards in. For drying the boards when they're done I've actually modified a cheap little oven. I added a duct to force the air past the element so I thought that might do a better job. It's also got a thermocouple in there for more precise readings and of course a temperature controller. But yes, it is a bit Frankenstein, isn't it? The fire bricks in the bottom are to stop me putting things on the bottom there because I found that part gets very hot indeed and that's where I've melted things. Whoops. Well, I hope that's answered the questions. That's all from me this week. Catch you next time.